alone. How did you know I'm here? Oh, yeah. I told her I was coming to pass some time here. No, you don't need to come. Sorry, Brian. I want to be left alone. Brian, please. I said I want to be left alone. Okay, if you insist. But promise you won't take much of my time. Okay, then. Hi. Hi. Why are you doing all this to yourself? You know I love you. I don't want you to be the mother of my children. No man will ever love you like I do. Stop all this, Brian. I've told you several times that I am not interested. That's the lie. I know it. Look at me. Look into my eyes and tell me you don't love me. Look deep into your heart of heart and tell me if I'm not that man of your dreams. Okay. Okay, but... I know you know I love you. But what you don't know, you don't know what I'm going through. Ethel. This is the second year. And you're telling me the same thing. I have removed my eyes from any other woman. I have waited for you. Just because of you, Ethel, my love. What is that mountain that love cannot climb? Or ocean that love cannot cross? Or is it that desert that, that the water of love cannot overwhelm? Love is as strong as death. Its flames burn so wild that even the night becomes so long. I can't do without you. You're my life. You're my everything. Stop this, Brian. <laughs> you're always killing me right deep inside. <laughs> with a voice that echoes. But meet with a stiff resistance. <laughs> of nature and fairness. Then let me break through that wall. Let me use the hammer of love. To penetrate that natural unfairness. <laughs> Only then you will know. But in every rule, there are exceptions. It's here. It's here. Exactly what I'm saying. This case has been so difficult. Why would I be going through all this for the sake of love? If it's, if it's a job, I'm stable with a good salary. I have secured a good future for myself and whosoever will be my wife. I have a house, a car, and other business attached to my job. Oh, Pastor, am I not handsome? Mm. Brother Brian, I really feel for you. By the way, who is this girl? What church does she attend? And who is her pastor? Pastor, 
we grew up in the same quarter. She was a young little girl which every other man would want to get. She was outgoing and friendly. Her parents are well to do, or better still, average in the society. She's a Baptist. Mm. That is where we have a problem here. You know, in our church, we don't marry people from Orthodox churches. And you know the rules of the church and our policies when it concerns marriage. Brother Brian, did you not see any beautiful girl in our church here? Or one of our sister churches? Pastor, love does not have color. Neither does it choose denomination, tribe, or race. Love is an issue of the spirit. Whenever it catches you, it becomes captive. Unless you have help from above. Pastor, I love this girl. How long have you known this girl? And hope you've not been sleeping with her. Pastor, that is the irony in the matter. I've been asking this girl out for over two years now. She has not given me the opportunity to even hang out with her. My presence scares her away. <sighs> Talking about sleeping with her, that's far from the picture. You know we don't sleep with women, with women before getting married to them. That's the rule as a church. But Pastor, I think she loves me. But I think there is something eating her deep in her heart. I think she's going through some sort of depression. Well, if that's the case, then invite her over. Um, maybe it's a spiritual problem. For that, we'll pray over it. Okay, Pastor. Thank you very much. If I get married to this girl, I'll be the happiest man in this life. Thank you. God bless you. Okay, let's pray. Lord, I thank you for Brother Brian. I pray that you take charge over whatever this is challenged right now and handle it to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor. God bless you. Melda, you're my best friend. And there is nothing about me that you don't know. I'm practically confused in this life. I don't know why nature will do this to me. Do you love him? What else do you want me to tell you? I love and adore him. Then tell him everything about yourself. If he loves you, he will stay, otherwise he'll walk away. How can you say that? Tell him what? My friend, you must be crazy. <laughs> then stop tormenting this guy. Go somewhere else. In fact, go out of town until he is married. Then you can come back. Because he's not ready to let go. <laughs> a handsome guy. Haunting you for two years. Till now. <laughs> I wish I would have a man like that in my life. Stop breaking my heart, my friend. You know, I can't force this guy. In fact, I can't even stand before him, talk less of opening my mouth, to, to tell him what. What do you want me to tell him? How my 
sacred life brought me this pain. How my desire for men and my passion for sex led me down the drain. Yes, yes, and yes. Maybe this will scare him away or even give him a second thought. I have to leave this town for good. Where, where are you going to with this bag? The last time we spoke, you never told me you were traveling out of town. So, you have not become my shadow. That goes with me everywhere I go. Even in the darkest part of the night. You cause me so much pains with your words. You are that arrow that pierces me into the deepest part of my heart and paralyzes me with someone caught with a stroke. If you really want to know, <sighs> it is because of your love that I'm leaving this town. I'm tired of running away from my shadows. At least let me go to somewhere I can have a calm life. No, Itel, no. I mean, no one can run away from love. As a matter of fact, distance only draws it to that beating heart. Because the person you love is out of sight. It's a... Brian, I'm not what you think I am. I know, but you're neither a devil nor an angel. No real man will see a pretty lady like you walking on the street. This polluted world. This world full of decadence. It's a... Then... Let me fight this fight once and for all. At least let me be that brave warrior that never turns her back on the face of a fist battle. Okay, okay, fine. You get in the car, we'll go somewhere so com somewhere comfortable which we can talk this thing. Okay, once and for all. I won't forget my gentleness. Okay. Uh, this is your place of meditation. A place where you come with your heart, with all your wishes, in prayers to God. So it will only be fair to come here and put an end to all the nightmares, the long nightmares that gave you sleepless nights. 
You are right. It all started as a young girl. Nobody knew this part of me. Even in my church, they all knew I was still a virgin. I lead the choir, praises, and worship, but with a high anxiety for sex. I suffered with my emotions through masturbation and other secret feelings. I couldn't say no to anyone. Where that came from, God alone knows. Until one day, I hired a light fever. I began vomiting with an acute headache. So I went to the hospital. That is when I find out I was pregnant. As if that was not enough, I was also HIV positive. Everything happened at the same time. I thought about my parents, my life, and the generation yet unborn. So I said to myself, so Ethel, this is the end. So you mean you have a baby now? No. I told the doctor to do away with it. I couldn't manage my life, sickness, and the unborn baby. I couldn't suffer the poor child. So did he? He refused to do it. So I went to another hospital where they didn't hesitate to do it with a little money. That's bad. That's really bad. So I told myself to revenge on any other man that comes my way. I dealt with families, especially the ones I thought were the reason for my predicaments. I stopped going to church. Not even the pressure from the pastor and my church members could cause me to stop the bad life I was living. Neither did I go back to church. My friend Emelda was the only one who knew what I was going through. She tried her best to call me back in order. But it was as if the spirit controlling me was getting wild by the day. Until I met you, then I decided to rededicate the remaining part of my life to God, thinking maybe I could find mercy in his eyes. That's my story. Thank God for a second chance. It's good to be fine, okay? I was surprised to know you are still around because I was so sure you left town already. Not anymore, my friend. I'm back for good. I finally told him everything. <laughs> Just like that. Like, what happened? How? When? Tell me about it. My dear, that guy is, an, is a guidance angel sent from above. He met me on my way with my back, and one thing led to another, I'm um, yeah. <laughs> so what did he say, like, in short, what was his reaction? That is exactly where I can't place my fingers. The only thing he said was that we need to see his pastor. I was shocked, because everything I told him did not even frighten him, though there was a change of mood. <laughs> 
Maybe I have to flow to the pastor's office. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't have to do that. <laughs> ah, Brian is calling. Mm -hmm. Hello, love. Okay, I'll be there immediately. Here you go. Wow. So miracles still exist. <laughs> okay. Are you both married or about to get married? About to. Well, I have good news for you and um, also bad news. The results of your HIV test indicates that both of you are negative. You seem to be surprised. Is there anything you're not telling me or something I need to know? No, no. Um, does that mean we can actually go ahead with our marriage plans? Not quite. No, the results of your genotypes show some um, AS and SS, which means um, you have given birth to sickle children. You know, when you have AS and SS, it's not good to get married with um, genotypes like that because you might end up um, giving birth to children that will be medically unstable and might cost you a lot of money and pain to really go through the process of um, building a good family. But doctor, can something be done about this? Nothing medically. I think um, only God can intervene in a situation like this. That's if you decide to go ahead with the marriage. You're welcome. Where is your result? Something is wrong somewhere. I can't believe all the other tests proved negative. But something I never thought of came in to bring embarrassment. I think we have to visit another hospital to confirm this. There might be a mistake somewhere. I don't know whether you believe. But for me, I believe in miracles. Your real dedication back to God has brought about this healing. Then why all this problem with genotype? I believe God knew about it too. Well, I'll go and see the pastor about that. Okay? So, Pastor, what do we do now? Nothing. Only prayers to God. From the tests you people carried out, HIV, uh, hepatitis B, and also genotype, all the others are negative. But for the genotype, that there is incompatibility. But, but Pastor, can't we just, just go ahead and get married and believe in God for a miracle? <laughs> no. In our church, we don't do that. We believe God for miracles before we marry, not after we marry. And be careful not to get close to her, lest you find yourselves into temptations. Okay, Pastor, I understand. <laughs> 